are live. Turbo Fish is first on. I gotta get I gotta get my comment section up here. Five minutes early, but uh yeah. Last time it took me a while to get stuff figured out here. Dank tanks, what's up? Hey Neon. I'm trying to get my uh what up, what up, what up, Sash? Connor? I know we're a little early. Yo yo, Michael, my boy. What's up? What up? What up? What up? What up, foo? Mikey? Greg? Petsotics? Go Pats? What's up? First, finally, Turbo Fish. Hey, hello, sir. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I didn't. I am literally. Uh, tonight is the first night that my youngest son, my almost two-year-old, is now hopping out of the crib. So I didn't even really get a chance to get this whole thing started, like, super quick. But we're live. Nothing's messing up. Everybody's showing up. Thank you, Neon Tetra. I'm so happy that I can get some people into the aquarium hobby, especially Planted Tanks. How's it going, John? The fishbowl. Fin time, thank you. Extreme game. Oh, you got a torch coil. Torches are like by far one of my favorite and one of my least favorite because they're so gorgeous. They flow perfect, but then all of a sudden they just start stripping and you've done nothing. But go check out uh, Aaron's Aquariums. He'll he'll let you know why. I'm running the Marine Land planted uh, light on this one. And I love it. It's doing awesome. It's over a year old. Uh, Built-in timer. So good. Do I have any tips for a beginner with dirted tanks? Um, yeah, just skip the dirt. I used to do all org organic dirt. And oh, what a pain in the butt it is. Let me tell you, and this is not just because I sell them. If you go with like even like a nutrient rich substrate like fluorite or ADA soil, um, as opposed to just organic dirt. And then if you want to add root tabs, even if you go uh, inert substrate like sand and you want to add root tabs. I mean, look at the size of this friggin' Blixa. This is like the mother of all Blixa right here. And that's just straight inert substrate and root tabs. I would skip dirt. I've done dirt. Uh, once the tank is settled in, like after a long time, it's cool, but to begin with, it is a nightmare and I hate it. I just do not like dirt anymore. Not to say I don't like nutrient-rich substrate. I don't like just straight dirt substrate. Issues for almost a year. Oh, good, without issues for almost a year, awesome. Bird's Nest is killing it. So I tried to set up this live stream downstairs last night with the uh, Reese. Uh, the tank looks like it's grown. Yes, Mike, it, it just grows like crazy. Um, I tried to set up the live stream downstairs in front of the reef tank because I wanted to do my next live stream in front of the reef tank and I could not get the blues and whites dialed in um, for the camera. Like I know you see like how bright this is, but the reef light was just whiting out the entire tank and I could not get it figured out. I was going up, down, just whites, not whites. Um, most of my, my videos I shoot on the reef tank, I black out the entire area so it's just the reef. So there's really nothing that the lights can do, but I tried to do a live stream. I tried to get some video today, doing a lot, last night, doing a live stream and I couldn't get it up. And then my dog, Huckleberry, who's right here, uh, grabbed this squeaky toy and was just bouncing off the basement walls. There was no way I was gonna get it done. I was gonna go on right after uh, Michael went on, but that didn't happen. How deep should organic dirt be? Um, I would say about two to three inches with a cap on top. Hey, Marlboro, all right. 
Yes, Extreme Gamer. Yeah, I remember you on my videos. Uh, go to Mass Aquarium's Facebook page and drop a message and you'll get a million replies. Uh, everybody on that page is super nice, super helpful, and they love to help out people trying to set up tanks too. My favorite root tabs, dank tanks. My favorite root tabs. No, no, no more cyclic tanks. Uh, my favorite root tabs are my aquarium box root tabs. <laughs> Go get you my aquarium box root tabs at shop.myaquariumbox.com. Those are my favorite root tabs. The ones Greg Jones makes in his basement. Uh, I'm sure I would reply to you. Just uh, tag me. Tag Mike Haynes. Reef Spy, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Good to see you. I tried to do it in front of the reef tank tonight. I couldn't get it done last night. IFG in the house. Uh, what's the most challenging part of my 40 breeder? Um, was definitely the blackbeard algae that i just been going through for so, so long. And uh, finally got it all taken care of. Huckleberry, get out of there. Finally got it all taken care of with the newest concoction, which is 50% hydrogen peroxide, 50% Flourish Excel, mix it up in a spray bottle, and get your tank down to about here. Douse everything that needs to be doused that's got Blackbeard on it, and uh, everything it looks 20 times better, 50 times better, like 100 times better. All the moss is purling and growing better. The Blixa looks great. The Anubius looks great. Like, this was a miracle. Um, I do have a video on what I did, too. What's up, James? Thanks to you, I started a saltwater aquarium without the stress. I'm so happy. I get that uh, a ton of my videos is people started their first saltwater aquarium without the stress because of my videos, and that uh, was really, really, you know, truly humbling. Especially since Michael Aaron's from Aaron's Aquarium convinced me to do it, and then once I did it and saw how easy it was, I decided to shoot a bunch of videos. Puck, get out of here decided to shoot a bunch of videos on how simple you can really start up a saltwater aquarium and, and keep it going. Not just start it up and forget about it, but keep it going. Awesome, fluval soil is good. Hey Megan. Uh, I know I need a Boston flag. Would I recommend a freshwater or a nano marine tank for a beginner? I would um, I'd go either way. Really the only difference is when you do a water change, you're either changing fresh water or you're changing salt water. But if you just want to do fish only and not corals, you could do a nano salt water just as easily as you can do a nano fresh water. If you're a beginner, I recommend the bigger the better to start off. Uh, 40 breeder is my favorite size tank. Um, the dimensions for beginners, for experts, for aquascaping, for saltwater, for freshwater, 40 gallon breeders are awesome. And you can get them at Petco when they do the dollar per gallon sale for $40, so even better. Patriots team tank, team tank, team tank, themed tank. Yeah, that would be cool. I've been meaning to see if I can get my two boys into another tank like they had, which at my old house, which I just ended up taking over anyway. So I want them to do a tank and actually do like what they want in the tank and not me just going in and fiddling around with it. Yep, go rewatch it. Yeah, 40 breeder is my favorite size. Is the Fluvo Evo 13 gallon a good starter? I have never um, had that specific tank. 13 gallons I think is a bit small. Like I think a minimum for a beginner is go get yourself a 29 gallon kit, like an Aquion kit or Marine Land kit or whatever. It comes with the hood, the filter, the light. You know, you start off small with whatever type of fish you want, you know, co community tropical fish, and just learn how to take care of a tank. And then the 29, you can go, you know, and do a bunch of things with, but it's a great start just to start with a kit. Um, and it's very cheap. I think it's like 90 bucks for the whole kit. Um, 
if you want to go from scratch from tank and light and filter and everything I would always recommend a 40 breeder along with uh, either a canister filter or an aqua clear hang on back filter uh, you can't go wrong with those I love Fluval M series lights these uh, these chrome lights I don't know if you can see it uh, they just blend right in and they're sleek um, I love the Fluval M series chrome lights what do we got here 68 people all right Uh, basic equipment to start a 40 gallon salt. I have the whole playlist on how I started my entire 40 gallon salt water tank, along with updates and the years that it's been running. Go check out the, that whole playlist. Get those likes up, hit the thumbs up. I see you, I see you. Uh, my water change schedule on my tanks is every 7 to 10 days on the 40 gallon breeder salt water reef tank, every month on the 10 gallon salt water reef tank, and probably every 6 weeks to 2 months on this tank. Um, and when I do, I, I only do 10 gallons, uh, 8 to 10 gallons. I do two 5 gallon buckets, that's it. Oh my god, the comments are going so fast. Um, how to set up a saltwater tank I, is the name of the playlist. Connor. Scouting a two to five and a half gallon dwarf pup or planted tanks. Any tips for a plant keeping beginner who hasn't done plants before? I've kept fish before, but never any puffer or live plants. Uh, if I'm correct, puffers will destroy your plants. Um, I, do n I have never kept puffers. I know there's some different types, but I know that they do eat plants if you don't have something for them to like shave their teeth down. Go. How do I deal with evaporation? I have an egg crate on top seven days after that. Um, evaporation is just a big part of having aquariums. I always have glass tops on my aquariums including my reef tanks and the glass top top helped so much on my 40 breeder reef tank that I unplugged my um, auto top off and I've yet to plug it back in maybe every seven or ten days I have I have like a water jug like you would bring to like uh, you know sports or run around with I think it's yeah I think it's a one liter jug and I just add one liters of RL water um, maybe every seven days and I do a water change every seven to ten days anyway so a lot of times I'm not even topping off at all so glass tops really really help with evaporation for sure is there any plants you would warn beginners to stay away from reef spy uh, yeah there's a lot of plants there's uh, dwarf baby tears are super difficult there's any plant that's red is going to be difficult um, what else some floating plants can be difficult uh, a lot of mosses are easy difficult plants there's really like any any type of plant that has uh, a lot of color or the eye is really thin and needly tends to be more difficult needs for it's needs co2 needs lighting but I would talk about what plants are good for beginners, like Anubias, Java Fern, Mosses, Jungle Val, um, Crips. Even Blixa can be uh, fairly easy. Crips are good. Um, there's so many. Bacopas are really good. Amazon Swords. There's so many easy plants to start with before you get into plants that need a uh, variety of fertilizers as well as highlight and co2 to get the beauty out of the plant and if reef spy if you're a reefist reefer and you already dose all your stuff to make your corals pop planted tanks would be super easy for you yep 40 breeder is awesome patriot sucks go jets i get that a lot no worries but five rings baby is there a CO2 regulator you recommend? Yes, I, uh, I'm using the GLA regulator. It came, I bought the whole setup from Greenleaf Aquariums and I, I've ran this thing nonstop for 
geez, I want to say like almost three years and I've never had one problem with it. Um, I'll try to post a link after the live streams up to their website because I they really have some good equipment. Excuse me, I gotta get the stuff right here. Yeah, Huckleberry. Huckleberry does not like me to do live streams. He prevented me from live stream last night, as well as my replays. I guess I follow a question. For starting with the beginner plants in a small tank, is a CO2 setup necessary? Uh, no. CO2 is not necessary at all. Liquid CO2, pressurized CO2, you can have a gorgeous planted tank with just nutrients in your substrate provided by either uh, nutrient rich substrate like fluorite or the ADA substrates or using root tabs to feed your roots with low light. Um, I have tons and tons of videos on low tech tanks and how to set them up and what plants to use with them. It is not difficult at all. It can be frustrating to start but once the plants get settled in the water and you're you know you have a light schedule and your tank is cycled the plants will start to grow like crazy and you'll be trimming them so often that you'll be selling them that's how you know if you get the right plant for low tech tanks they will just take off like crazy eagles yeah the eagles i i think when we might be seeing an eagles patriots super bowl rematch and well eagles fans know how that ended best light for high tech um this light is doing awesome um any type of led with lots of reds uh is good for planted tanks um this light has blues but they don't really do anything for the planted tanks i really don't ever get into par and watts i heard a lot of good things about the Phoenix, and i've even heard that using the Mars Aqua that grows corals, which I have on my 40 reef, can also grow plants, but I have yet to try that. I like this marine land though. This mar marine land's doing great. You're welcome, Connor. Sorry, Extreme Gamer, the, the comments are flying through. Ask your question again, I'll, I'll get right to it. Um, Java fern is fairly an easy plant to grow. If uh, you're noticing that it's just dying back, make sure you don't plant the roots. It's, you know, keep the rhizome above the surface, maybe on driftwood. It could be getting too much light. You might want to drop it down a little bit to the below the tank. Uh, reef spy. Yeah. Um, last week in the live stream, someone asked the same question. I'm going to, I'm going to consider this, uh, a medium tech tank. And I know I say this and people bust my balls all the time for it, but, um, I run root tabs in the substrate. I do run pressurized CO2 and I guess the lights are considered high light. You know, um, it's a strong light. That's why I have it raised up a little, but I don't dose any dry ferts, any liquid ferts, and I don't have any difficult plants in here. So when you have pressurized CO2, you are going to be able to s keep difficult plants, but speed up the growth of easy to keep plants. If you give any plant light, nutrients, and CO2, they're gonna grow like crazy. So this tank is benefiting from the CO pressurized CO2 I do add to the tank, but I'm also not keeping difficult plants. These are all easy plants and I don't dose anything. I don't dose any dry fertilizers to this tank and the light cycle is really really short. The lights are only on for six hours a night. Sharing is caring. Boom. Uh, yeah David, Jungle Val will always come back. No matter how much, no matter how many times Jungle Val melts, it's gonna come back. I have destroyed an entire tank full of jungle val by overdosing Excel when I was never even dosing it and it all came back eventually if you're just patient. Um, how can you grow in spot algae? Um, you need to get some flow in that in that area. 
Um, a big part of both salt water and fresh water is flow. Uh, corals need the right, some need high flow, some need low flow. Well, most plants need a little bit of flow. If you can get like a gentle sway that keeps a lot of spot and brown algae off your plants. If they're not moving at all, that's when stuff will build up. And you can always get like uh, auto cats to eat it off. Or when you're doing your water change or every day when you go down, you know, if you see some, something, uh, some brown algae, just get your hand in there and, and just give it a quick swipe and the, the water movement should take care of it. But you, it's important to have flow. I have, I have the outtake from the canister and I have a power head over here, which creates kind of like one of these. And so the plants always are kind of moving, which helps with brown algae. All right, I have a 20 gallon salt water tank and would like to slowly add coral. What corals do you recommend? Um, hey, Rebel Life, what's up, buddy? Wait, hold on, Megan. All right, Extreme Gamer, just post them on the Mass Aquarium's Facebook page. If you are a part of the group or asked to join and then just tag me in it, and I'll get a notification and I'll take a look at it. Megan, beginner corals. I would stay away from SPS and there are some LPS that are really easy. Um, if you're looking to just have soft corals that are real pretty, uh, mushrooms, zoa, finger leathers, like in my opinion, those are easy corals to keep. But there's so many different corals that I have that have thrived that are supposedly a little bit difficult where a lot of the corals like zoas that are supposed to be super easy I cannot keep zoas they grow like crazy and then they just die out of like out of nowhere it drives me friggin mental one guy on my uh, one of my videos that I was reading yesterday had said you know everybody says zoas like dirty water well like I never knew what that means like what do you mean by they like dirty water and he had said that that my tank with the low bio load might be over filtered so the water is just like too clean and that could cause them to melt back and die so I, I mean it might be the case but every time I've got a zoa frag or any type of zoa in either one of my tanks they just start to take over the entire rock and they look gorgeous and then out of nowhere they just slowly start to disappear and there's no nudies uh, there's nothing eating them Trust me, I've sat there with a flashlight and clicked it on and off for hours and hours and hours over several different nights and I've never caught a nudie or even seen anything eating the zoas. They just melt. I do have a few zoa colonies in my 40 that have never gone away. They're not spreading crazy like a lot of zoas, but they just don't die, so that's good. And I do have pallies, I like pallies. Long, that's a very long answer, but uh, try zoas. Be careful, wear goggles, wear gloves. Uh, pallies, uh, maybe Reef Spy can comment down below and uh, give you some corals that he likes to uh, use for, that are easy corals. Hammers are always great. Octo spawn, frog spawn. Um, green star polyps are the most easy coral. Go get GSP frag and put that in your tank. Absolutely beautiful. Isolate it on a rock so it doesn't start to spread everywhere. Awesome. Oh, thank you, IFG. In Massachusetts, I can get these like that. What are you, a quadruple or 5X? Now that I met you in person, you, you built like a linebacker. I will find you one of these, I promise. Oh, see, Reef Spy has bad luck with those too. With reef tanks, you need to have two to four nitrates. That's why they feed off. So there you go. Uh, torches are here or there for me. Roa Foss. I use uh, Jonathan. I use GFO in my in my 40 breeder. I use the sponge. I have a hang on back filter on my 40 breeder, and I use a sponge, and then I use Chemi Pure Blue, and then I use GFO in a mesh bag. Uh, usually the jars you get they're most of them are all the same size. I use a third of that, and then I use a poly filter pad, right all in the hang on back filter. 
and I change out the ChemiPure and the GFO every two to three months. What fish would you suggest to go with a beta fish? I got my cousin a 10 gallon aquarium for Christmas and I'm wondering what fish to give him with it. Um, any type of tetra I think goes well with a beta. Um, if you have a small tank, maybe you get like, you know, six Ruminos or like six Cardinal Tetras, six Rasporas. I like to stay with the six range, like anything less isn't really a school. And I, I know a lot of fish, you know, they at least need six to feel like they're schooling. Uh, 40 breeder stand is from Marine Land, Gary. Have I kept angelfish? Oh yeah, angelfish are my favorite fish. Any tips on keeping them healthy and long? My serpas do great, haven't had luck with angelfish. I don't know, my angelfish were awesome. One of my angelfish got uh, like hole in head or some sort of fungus and the whole top of his mouth rotted away and he only had a bottom jaw and he still lived like forever. He was like the size of my fist. Um, I don't really have any tips on keeping angelfish. I don't have a whole lot of tips on keeping any fish. Um, I've really had good luck with every fish I've kept with the exception of German blue rams. I just cannot keep them. Uh, whether I keep the pH the, exactly where it's supposed to be and the water and everything. I just, I can't keep German blue rams. Every other fish I have not had a problem with. Um, tetras, fancy plecos, angelfish, rainbow fish. I haven't kept discus yet. I, I've yet to keep any discus, so I can't say all fish, but uh, usually angelfish are pretty hardy, in my opinion. Six skirt tetras. Thing just went up. How do you remove a coral from a frag plug and attach it to a rock? Um, with a razor blade, carefully slice it the glue away from the frag plug and then glue that bottom of that put it right on the rock so that's actually a great question now I'm getting parched when I get new corals I like to place them excuse me on the frag plug without glue in the aquarium and wait like a couple weeks and see if they're thriving there <coughs> excuse me and if the coral's doing good there the light is right the flow is right then i'll either remove them from the plug and glue them in, in their place or i'll leave them on the plug if i know it's the type of coral that's just going to grow over the plug anyway um, when you first get your corals in i always put them at the bottom of the tank and for like a day or two and then I've done my research ahead of time or you know I'm texting uh, Mike from Aaron's Aquariums or some of my other other guys that have reef tanks and you know what's a good placement for this and then you can you know you can YouTube it watch my videos watch everybody's videos Google it and then you put the coral where it's supposed to be on the frag plug, don't glue it in place, and then leave it there for a few weeks and see what happens. And if it works, then I'll take it off the frag plug and glue it down. That's how I do it. You know, I'm sure people do it a million ways and people that know reef tanks know, ex like they've been doing it for 20 years, know exactly where corals go and they place them right there, glue it right off the bat, no problem. Um, Connor, dilly dilly. Yeah, <laughs> Megan and Greg. Dilly dilly. Um, I love the dilly dilly commercials too. They're friggin' funny. I lost my train of thought now. What was the question? Oh, why don't I keep saltwater angels? I don't have a big enough tank with water in it to keep saltwater angelfish. And a lot of angelfish are not reef safe as well. So there is a tank in my garage 135 gallons, 52 gallon sump. Me and Greg are going to bring it down to the basement eventually. And the, it's still like, do I do a giant saltwater tank? Um, I have the sand, I have the rock, and do like a fish only predator tank or like a, a fish only really cool, cool looking fish, beautiful fish. 
and then if I decide to add corals later and I want to save a ton of money or you know we can frag swap then I can do that later but I want to do a native tank uh, a native New England bass tank would be really what I am dying to do but that's the reason why I don't have any angels because my tanks not big enough and I suppose on the 40 breeder I could do a dwarf uh, like a dwarf angel um, like a flame angel or something but they're also like proceed with caution for reef tanks and my corals are looking so good right now I hate to put a fish in there and then come back to the corals being all a mess but I would love a flame angel those are really really pretty fish um, Megan we're up to a lot I'll just say over 500. Oh, I knew you would say that, Reese Bay. Estuary tanks. Wow, that's cool. I do know what an estuary is, but I've never heard of an estuary tank. Um, if you're on Facebook, please go post that on Masquarium's Facebook page. I need to see that. Inspires by YouTube, plant, gravel, blah, 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 24 7 LED, liquid fur, Italian bell. Won't spread thoughts, but copa grows, but floats. Uh, lead weights, okay. Um, yeah, you can use lead weights to keep the bacopa down. If you plant it in the substrate, um, maybe even take two rocks to keep it there. Once the roots establish, I mean, it's not going to go anywhere. You can brush it around, and the roots get so long. Your jungle val will not propagate. Like, it's not running. It's not sending out runners. Um, I would just be patient. Uh, jungle valves are root feeder so if you want to put root tabs shop.myaquariumbox.com plug if you want to put root tabs like in every other one and the roots will feed off that but once jungle valve so it may take a while to start sending off runners but once it starts you are not going to get it to stop it will be every day you will be pulling out piles and piles and piles of it and giving it away that's how much it'll start to spread and it won't if you don't get in there and clip it and remove it it'll it won't stay where you want it to stay like in my 75 i had it all in the back the whole back of the tank but i was talking daily or every other day i was getting in there with my fingers and just pinching off from the mother plants and ripping jungle val out it just gets everywhere you'll have a whole tank full of it especially italian val Opinions on Aquion as a brand. Just bought a mini bow, blah, blah, blah. Um, I haven't had any problems with Aquion. Um, how big, Keith, how big is your saltwater tank? Can you give me a shout out and out and so you can give tanks and betas? Tanks and betas. Yeah, how big is your tank, Keith? DJ Max, I'm sorry. You know, the poor do need help. Instant Ocean Biosphere, I've never heard of that. Instant Ocean Reef Accelerator, I've never heard of that, but I will be researching it. Patience is the name of the game. Yes, John, you are correct. Uh, 30 gallon with two clowns um, I've had great success with my six line Ras. he's gorgeous I know it's like hit or miss with them but mine's really really cool and it's very small it's a low bio load I love my uh, coral hopping hawkfish he's also low bio load and very reef friendly um, any type of like tiny blini or goby those are always great. Um, I would say 30 gallons. You can get away with like a pair of clowns and maybe four or five small fish. I mean, you want to keep, you don't want to go crazy with the bio load, especially if you're not running a skimmer or you're just going to ask for trouble. What do we got here? How many? 77 watching? Sweet. Um, Uh, bro, you're running and gunning tonight, laying it down like carpet. Good work. Thank you, River Life. I love, fear the beard, man. I love your beard, too. 
I'd love to grow a beard like that, but my daughter and my wife do not like the scruffiness. You're welcome, Keith. Have you ever had a mandarin dragon? It? Yes, I've had. Uh, yeah, I talked about this last week too. <clears throat> super, super beautiful fish, like gorgeous fish. Mandarins are so beautiful, but unless you're getting them from a source that has trained them to eat frozen flake or pellet, you better have a lifetime supply of copepods for them to eat because they will just run out and they're super picky. They'll get super, super thin. You'll basically starve this fish out and it just will be torture for the fish. Um, but there is a lot of instances when they've been trained to eat frozen and pellet and flake uh, or you just have a drill, quadrillion, gazillion copepods like at all times. But they are so, so pretty. I love the way they look. Have I ever, Jack, have I ever done ordering online for fish? Or do I mostly go through LFS? Any negative experience ordering online? Um, I do order from Live Aquaria every once in a while when my LFS just absolutely cannot get the fish I want. Um, and I only have really one close local fish store the rest are like 30 minutes or an hour away and I just don't have time to drive an hour you know even though I'd love to look through the fish I just don't have time to spend two or three hours driving around and looking for fish so if that's the case I have ordered from uh, live aquaria and I have always received them all alive and then they've all stayed alive I've only ordered live fish from them twice so I'm two for two but I have ordered uh, my cleanup crew from the build your own cleanup crew for my 40 reef like five or six times um, that's hit or miss as well a lot of times you'll get a lot of snails that are dead but um, you're getting a ton of them so like when you click the one you're getting like 12 or 13 snails in a little bag and you know maybe two or three of them are dead so live aquaria um, is good in my book so far so good Yeah, well, Megan, that's awesome. If they're eating frozen, that's really good. Um, Stealth Bobber, you need to either add some Dr. Tim's one and only nitrifying bacteria, and then you can cycle your tank instantly with fish, or you need to test your water and wait until your levels are good to add your Oscar. Um, Michael was saying this last night, a lot of people say, well, I'll cycle with a hardy fish. Like, the fish is hardy, and it can survive what you're torturing it with, but that doesn't mean it's a nice thing to do to the fish. You know, it's like, I'm hardy. Uh, you could probably drop me in the woods, and I could get my way out, but that doesn't mean it's going to be fun. Uh -uh, what have you gotten live from Aquaria other than the cuke? Connor, I've got I got a diamond goby, um, I got some Siamese algae eaters, and what else did I got? I got some Bosmani from my '75 when I was at my old house, and they, like everyone came in good. I was having I was going through this Bosmani phase, and I was taking them all from every local fish store, PetSmart, Petco, you name it, and I wanted a giant school of them, like 20 or 30. And this was when my 75 was first going, and so I ordered them from Live Aquaria. And they came in awesome. 75, all right. What brand do you feed your freshwater fish? My Aquarium Box brand. I'm not even kidding, folks. I feed my fish my Aquarium Box fish food because they love it, and it's awesome. And I don't have to pay for it. Well, I do have to pay for it, but that's what I feed my fish. And every once in a while, I give them uh, Ocean Nutrition, San Francisco Bay brand, uh, frozen food. API Quick Start, yep. I have never tried that, and I, I don't know, I haven't seen any reviews on the API, but I do know uh, Dr. Tim's one and only works because I used it in my reef and this tank, and it was successful. See you, Jack. 
Um, Diamond Gobi and Yellow Watchman Gobi good together? Yes. Um, so far, so good. I have a green spot, it, green spot Yellow Watchman Gobi, and I have the Diamond Gobi, and so far, so good. He, the yellow one isn't like chasing him off or anything. Rapashi Superfoods, I have never used Rapashi. <coughs> Actually, no, 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 that's not true. I did use Rapashi for my Apistos. I got a free, oh no, that was Southern Delight. Are they the same brand? No, I've never used Rapashi. I have used Southern Delight years ago. I have three tanks now. Um, the Fritzime, I've I also never tried. We're trying to we're trying to get hooked up with Fritzime to get it in the uh, one of the my aquarium boxes. Would love to. Lights for a hundred and twenty gallon high tech planted tank. See you, Keith. Oh yeah, I would love to watch Walking Dead tonight, but my wife's working, so we're gonna have to wait till all the way till Tuesday night because she's working tomorrow night too. Um, one hundred and twenty. LED. Anything you can get with an LED is is good. I would research um, what whatever type of plants you're gonna. So if you're doing a high tech plant, high tech 120 gallon planted tank. Um, I know Kessel makes a great light. Uh, one of my my Facebook buddies that lives in New Hampshire, um, Keith actually. He runs Kessels on his giant. Uh, planted tank and his plants seem to be growing awesome. So I mean, why not why not try Kessels or uh, Marine Land? <laughs> What's Marine Land for a forty gallon bow front? All the way. Um, the built-in timer and the uh, how cool it is. Like this light's been on for a really long time and it's just, I mean, it's warm, but it's not hot like I've seen a lot of lights get. So I would recommend Marine Land all the way. Hello, Sandro from Montreal. What's the best way to feed your fish and what kind of food? Um, I like flake food. Pellets sometimes sink too quick. Uh, depending on what type of fish you have. I mostly keep like uh, tropical fish, tetras, and even my saltwater fish love flake food. Um, I usually sprinkle a tiny bit on top and then I dip my hand in the tank and sprinkle a tiny bit in the tank. That way the fish go crazy for what's in the tank and then when they're done with that, the flake I put on top of the tank is already getting starting to get blown down by the outtake of the filter and the power head. And then they go after that and they eat that. So that's good. Oh, yeah, Bose Money, man. They're going like crazy. I got I have Cardinal Tetras in here. They're all hiding. I have uh, a huge school of rummy nose. And then I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. About 9 or 10 Cardinal Tetras. They're gorgeous. Um, I already fed the tank, but I'll put a, a Sarah O'Nip tab right here. Oh, Sarah O'Nip, tab, O'Nip tabs. I love those too. They stick right on the glass. Fish go crazy for them. Uh, yes, I would start up our QT, QT tank. QT tank all the way. Oh, yeah. Angels are gorgeous. Thank you, Scowling Wolf. Uh, Nick K. Use half hydrogen peroxide, half fluorosic cell. Mix it in a bottle and spray it all around everywhere. How many small fish can you put in a nine gallon? Um, a beta or like a school of 
say Cardinals or Rumminos, you can put like a pair of like Bolivian Rams in there with maybe like a Bristlenose Pleco. Um, nine gallon, you don't wanna like go crazy and put tons of, you can put some guppies in there and then they'll breed, so you have to deal with that. Some platies. Um, I would stay away from any bottom schooling fish, but I always go with like any type of tetra. Rummy nose, cardinal, raspora, they're just beautiful. They'll school usually all along the middle of the tank, which is nice. How can Jay Cruz, how can you have a glass top with an aqua clear hang on back? Yes, you can spray more than once, but I would go, I would spray after you've drained like a majority of the water and then let it sit for 30 minutes and then finish your water change and only do that like once a month. Um, what was I saying before that? Son of a. Uh, green hair algae, toothbrush. Scrape it off with a toothbrush. Emerald crabs the same way with me. I get them in the tank, they eat everything. I try to supplement with algae wafers or nori and then they just end up dying. So I would stay away from the, uh, I mean if you wanna like borrow one, buy one from the fish store, have it eat all your algae and then bring it right back so that it has algae to eat there. I was eight years old when I had my first tank, maybe even younger. How can your sand not create a meth mess? Listen, Extreme Gamer, I don't know what your deal is, but I will do my best to get, if you posted on Mass Aquarium's Facebook and tagged me, I'll see it in my notifications and I will go check it out, I promise. Um. I don't know, what do you mean? Like, is there too much flow and your sand is just like blowing around? Is this a uh, salt water or a reef tank? Um, if you're, if the grain of your sand is like sugar, then yes, like even if a fish goes and swims by it, um, the tail can, you know, stir up some of that fine, fine sand. But if the, if the grains are big enough, then it shouldn't make it a giant mess unless you're talking about when you gravel back it. I'm in college and it's a four hour drive away. What's the best way to pack my fish on the ride? Oh yeah, glass top. Uh, glass tops don't go all the way back. They leave a gap like this. And they give you a plastic piece that slides over. And what you do is you just take a razor blade and you cut out like, uh, like I have a plastic piece on this and I have it cut out on that side for my intake of my filter and my CO2 tube. And then I have it cut out on this side with my heater and my outtake. Only about like, you know, two inches by two inches. So the entire tank is covered. Same thing with the hang on back. Downstairs hang on back with the reef tank is I just cut out, you know, a spot like that. So you have plastic, spot for your hang on the back, plastic spot for your heater and no fish can jump out and the entire tank is covered. Bushy plant behind me is Blixa. Watch coral fish 12G. Yeah, he's I like that channel a lot too. He's a he's a good guy. I met him at uh, the aquatic experience. He interviewed Michael. Um, super tall too. He walked up to me and I was like, hey, what are you like, 6'6"? Six, six? Skinny dude. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, that was cool. Michael brought his drone over from the UK and was like flying it around. I was like, I have to get that footage. That looks so cool. Um, underwater submersible lights. Hmm. I have never tried that. It sounds dangerous to me. Anything like heater, like I've been shocked from uh UV sterilizers blasting voltage through the tank and it did not feel good. So submersible lights, um, I'm thinking no. What's up Fonseca? I have not ever 
had half beaks. No. Oh, the a long drive for fish. Um, all you need is a five gallon bucket or two five gallon buckets or like one of those heavy duty totes. <coughs> um, if you're going on a train, depends on how many you're taking, but <coughs> sorry, my throat's super dry. You need an air stone with a battery powered air pump. Uh, you can buy them at like tackle shops and a heater or a power head and a heater. You want to keep the water to temp and you want to get some sort of flow and surface agitation. So I would just put them in a five gallon bucket, fill the water halfway, drop a small heater that you could buy for like six bucks, a five gallon heater and an air stone with some airline tubing and a clip on battery powered motor. I have one on my bait bucket for ice fishing. You can get them at Bass Pro, you can get them on Amazon. I mean, they're super cheap. So like all said and done, you can get this whole thing for a bucket, a heater and a pump with the air stone for like probably 20 bucks or less. Um, that's how I would do it. If I was going on a train, I'd put all my fish in the, in the bucket. Um, I do have that uh, 135 gallon I am gonna fire up eventually. That's my, my future plans for a tank. I know, we do need to get on it. Night, Connor. Um, what plants are in this tank? So I have uh, Blixa, uh, Anubius Nana, Dwarf Sag, uh, some sort of crypt, I forget the name of that. I've got Needle Java Fern, and I've got Christmas Moth, uh, Cypress Hellfiery, and I've got a ton of boost all like in here. If you were up close, you could see it like growing in between all the Anubias. Um, ever since that Blackbeard's gone, the moss has really taken off. The idea was to have this moss grow over this massive piece of like nice manzanita that was in this tank but excuse me ah, i got the fire blazing it's super dry in this house so i gotta get the humidifiers going um but the driftwood was so covered in blackbeard and this was before i made my new concoction that i just I couldn't do anything. I just cut the driftwood out of there because I was getting to the point where I was going to destroy this tank. And by that I mean I wasn't going to bleach it. I was going to take this whole tank, drain it, put it in the back of my truck and huck it in the dumpster. Filter, heater, everything except for the light and just start from scratch because it was getting that out of hand where I just I could not manage it. Manage it. It was just ridiculous. You sent over a request, I'm sure that someone will add you to the group. Um, African breed, I, I mean African cichlids are gorgeous, there's tons of beautiful African cichlid tanks out there. Go check out IFG, go, go check out Jay Wilson. Um, I know Jay's going through some issues right now health wise, um, he's doing good. I know he moved so I don't know what he's got set up for tanks but he has, when he does, he has beautiful cichlid tanks. Uh, same with IFG, go check out his cichlids. Beautiful, beautiful cichlids. I have a Marine Land stand. Best way to sterilize driftwood without boiling it. Um, power wash it and spray it with hydrogen peroxide. We'll let it sit for a little bit and then power wash it again, and you should be good to go. I've had a few instances where the driftwood is just way too big. Like the driftwood, if I do a native tank, <clears throat> will be giant for the 135, and I am just going to buy it um, so it's nice and clean, and then I'm gonna spray it with hydrogen peroxide and let it sit for a few days, and then just power wash it. Oh, and I will have to cut this short because there are the kids and Luke just jumped out of bed. I will be back. <laughs>